Hi, Meg here. In this tutorial, we're going to go over a Facebook ad campaign that is currently being run. And we're going to take a look at the different ads, uh, a look at the different numbers to really give you a good idea of um, how you can track the success of a particular campaign and ad on Facebook. So my sister, uh, Kaylin, has been kind enough to um, let me use her dashboard and her campaign that she's running so we can look at a real life campaign and and all those uh, numbers. She's done a really great job uh, creating this campaign and creating ads so this will be fun to go through. Um, and if you haven't checked it out, she is um, at www.konawapasak.com so it's www.k-o-n-a-w-a-p-o-s-a-k.com it means no rabbit in Cree um, and it's a really cool website and she's doing a really great job so I wanted to give her a little bit of a shout out there so uh, head over to your Facebook dashboard and um, I'm gonna select here campaigns and ads and like I discussed in the previous video, you'll see um, your notifications and your all your current activity that's been going on, your daily spending um, allowance and all that good stuff. Okay, so right now Kaylin is currently running a campaign and it's Kona Wapasak Get Artist. So she followed my tip on naming the campaign um, with the objective that you have in mind for it. So her objective is to find and get artists for her website. Here we can see the status, so it's currently active. You can pause it at any time. You can delete it at any time as well. We have our start date, end date, and then her budget. So I think it's really clever that she has $2 a day. I mean, why not? Let's make it affordable. It doesn't need to be $500 a day or 50. If two works for you, then, then let's see what we can create and, and go from there. Um, you will see then your remaining. So today she's used up about 30 cents and um, the total lifetime budget that she spent is $39. So she's really made some very, very effective ads and we'll take a look there. So I'm gonna select the campaign and by doing that, what, what's gonna happen is it's going, going to show us all the ads that have been created under the specific campaign. Okay, so we got some really beautiful pie charts and graphs and percentages and colors and everything and you might be going, oh my gosh, this is, um, a bit much but once we break it down it really offers a lot of insight into the psychology behind the people uh, taking an action on your ad and um, and really what it takes to get people to not only see it but to take that action and to click through and to ultimately like your page or whatever your objective is so for this uh, tutorial Kaylin's objective was to get artists um, and to create more likes on her Facebook page. So she's directing the traffic from the ad directly to her Kona Wapasak Facebook page. Okay, so here we'll start out with this little pie graph here. And um, so we can see that Facebook basically shows us um, three different things in this pie chart, okay? So this it, this, it doesn't show up for on this pie chart because Kaylin has some really effective ads going on, um, but the targeted would be the approximate number of people your sponsored story or your ad will reach based on the targeting that you've selected. Okay, so Kaylin has pretty much filled that up with her reach. So that is the number and that'll be, you can see the different proportions now. So that'll be the number of individual people who saw her ads. Okay, and then the social social reach are the number of people that saw her ads from another person. So we talked about this in the previous video. So basically, these are the sponsored stories. These are when your friend likes Kona Wapasak and you see that in your timeline. So this is a really great ratio of new people being made aware of Kona Wapasak and then their friends now um, seeing that their friend liked it. Okay, so we have that kind of um, social proof, that social um, aspect there. Okay, so moving on here, we have our response to the ad. So this is basically the ad showing up on your Facebook page, you know, on your either on your newsfeed or on the right hand side of your newsfeed. And then now here's the response to the ad. So Okay, so we're going to go over clicks and actions. 
So basically a click is any time someone clicks on your ad or sponsored story. It doesn't have to result in or it doesn't result in any type of action. That's not what it's monitoring. Um, so basically if they like your page, that's not being counted in the clicks. That is, however, being counted in the actions here. Okay, so you can see, so these are really interesting numbers. <clears throat> Excuse me, and it helps with the with the um, how you can see how your ad is converting. So how many people are clicking on your ad? And then how many people are then from that point liking your page? And so here you can see that you know on specific days there's a lot of click-throughs, but not as many likes. And then you look over here, and you have more people liking the page versus just clicking on it and then not taking any action. And when you track when you created an ad or basically on the specific day, you can see why that was and, and how that um, came to be. Okay, so we're going to scroll down here. And this is a, these are some really, really interesting numbers that you want to pay attention to. So your campaign reach is the number of unique people who saw your ads from the campaign. Okay, so um, Kaylin has reached nine, over 9,000 people. Okay, so 9,000 individual Facebook users have at one point in time had the Kona Wapasak ad on their newsfeed or on the side of their newsfeed. Okay, so that ad showed up for over 9,000 people. That's pretty crazy. Then we talk about the frequency. So this is the average number of times you've reached each person. So it is possible that, and I'm sure you've, you've encountered this, that you see the same ad five times. Okay, so Kalen's frequency is 1.2 people have seen her ad. So, social reach, that's what we talked about before in the pie chart. So basically that is a number of people that have seen an ad or a sponsored story based on their friends taking action on the ad. So it's Megan Adams liked Kona Wapasak, and you see that in your newsfeed. And so that's the social reach there. Again, we talked about the action. So that's how many people have um, basically um, shared, liked, or interacted with your page depending on what your, what your uh, target was. So for Kaylin, she's had 99 um, actions on her page. So likes, shares, etc. And then she's had 102 clicks. So 102 people have clicked on the ad. Not counting whether they liked it, doesn't matter. 102 people have actually clicked on the ad or sponsored story. Okay. And then she's had she's a really phenomenal click-through rate. So CTR click-through rate. Number of unique clicks you received divided by the number of times your ad was shown. So she's 0.865%. Okay, that is a really highly converting number. And um, I would say on average, let me go to my, my sheet here, I can't remember. Off the top of my head, um, what people think. Okay, so according to the professionals, myself not included, um, optimal CTR is 0.11 to 0.16%. Keelan has 0.86%. Okay, so she's doing something right. Really exciting. She spent $12.30. And, and keep in mind, this is taken in the last 28 days. Not bad. I mean, you're getting people, so you're reaching almost 10,000 people. Okay. And um, they're taking action. They're liking your page. And you spent $12. I mean, that, that's pretty doable for, for most people, I would say. Okay, so now that we went over the, the general campaign and how the ads are performing within the campaign, we're going to go over the specific ads that Keelan has created. And so these right here are her ads. And she's followed my advice, and, and I love it. Um, and she's created multiple ads. And what happens is when you create multiple ads is you can see which ones perform better. Maybe you're using a different graphic. Maybe you're targeting a dim different demographic. And figure out which ads work, which ones don't, and create more ads that work and get rid of the ones that don't. It doesn't cost you any money, um, any extra money to do that. 
all the ads you create under a specific campaign feed off of the same budget. So you could have a hundred different ads. If one's outperforming the other ones, great. Um, the other ones aren't taking up any extra space. You're just now determining which ones are going to be the most effective for you. So if we take a quick look right here, we can see that there's two that are absolutely outperforming all the others. And it's this one right here, okay, with a reach of over 6,000. And then it's this one here with a reach of over 2,000, okay. So let's, let's talk a bit about this one first. So I'm just going to click on this ad, and it brings us to the ad preview. So this is exactly the ad that Kaylin has created. So calling all artists, we help Aboriginal artists sell their art, jewelry, and native regalia. Okay, and then she has this dream catcher picture. Here we see the targeting. So she's created this ad to target over 8 million users who live in Canada, 18 and older, who are, who are not already connected to Kona Wapasat and who are in the categories of DIY, crafts, fashion, movie, film. So really interesting categories that she's picked, obviously really effective. Um, and then this is kind of serves as a good reminder <laughs> of you know what ad um, really is targeting who, so you can kind of customize moving forward. Facebook does have an option to create a similar ad. So you can um, basically keep all this criteria and not try to remember, you know, all the different uh, specifications. Okay, to the right, we're going to see the individual ads performance. So right now we're looking at the actions. Again, these are the actions taken by people, and then they, they do collect this data over 24 hours or within 25, 28 days of them clicking on your ad. Again, this doesn't count the individual likes for your page. This is just the total actions that have been taken. So here we have um, this, this, sorry, the specific page likes. So it does then break it down. So the total number of page likes you received within this action, and the number of clicks on links posted on your page. Okay, so then we can even see more granular detail. So We've had 24 total actions. We've had, from those actions, 23 people like the page, and then one link was clicked on the page. So they went to the Facebook page, they liked it, and then they clicked on the link. We're hoping that the link they clicked on took them to konawapasak.com and they bought something. Okay, so you can kind of monitor that. Okay. Um, Okay, this is really important. I'm going to close this so it doesn't get too confusing here. So here we see our reach, over 2,000. Our frequency as we discussed above. Oops. This is our social reach. So remember, this is how, how many times it's showing up for friends of people that have taken an action on the ad. These are the actions, the clicks. This is your click-through rate. So again, the number of unique clicks you received divided by the number of times your ad was shown. So she's a 0.9%. Phenomenal. Um, max bids. So we're doing click per impression. And we talked about this in the in the um, previous video. So Kaylin's paying for every time the ad shows up. She's not paying for clicks. She's not paying for when someone like actually clicks on the ad and goes to the Facebook page. She's just paying for whenever it shows up in someone's newsfeed or on their Facebook wall. Okay. Um, Facebook is auto-generating this, so she's not doing any bidding on her own. And then the price she's paying is 69 cents. So she's paying for per impression, it's 69 cents. Okay. So it looks like she now opted for the option to create a sponsored story within or for this ad. Okay, so basically, anytime someone now likes and has taken the action to click and like the page, if they fall within this specific targeting demographic, they will see this show up. They will see that their friend, Kaylin Adams, likes Kona Wapasak, <clears throat> excuse me, and that they'll see the little logo on your page, and then they'll have an option to like it right then and there. From this sponsored story, it hasn't been very effective. We've had one page like, which is really interesting, because typically Facebook says that, Sponsored stories 
um, are twice as effective as ads. I don't necessarily see that in, in the campaigns and ads I've created. I think in theory, um, it would, <laughs> but <clears throat> excuse me, in, in reality, it doesn't seem to quite translate that way. And I think what my biggest issue is the fact that they're so expensive. Okay, so Kaylin is now paying $2.89 every time someone sees that sponsored story. So what you have to do is you have to weigh that for yourself. Is that, is that effective? Is, how is it working? Um, how does that fit into your budget? And I'm, you know, so how does it fit into your goals? So I just want you to be really cognizant of the fact that sponsored stories, yeah, proven to be twice more effective. They might not necessarily be twice more effective for you. In them being twice more effective, they're going to be double the amount of a regular ad. So just make sure they're working for you. If they aren't, pause that, delete it. You don't need to create a sponsored story at the same time. So we're going to head down to this next ad, and let's quickly take a look here. Okay. So what Kaylin did was, how is it different from this first one? So this first one had, okay, so this first one had the dream catcher visual. This one has the rabbit visual. The verbiage, pretty much exactly the same. Target's bigger. She also includes the U.S. in there. Um, oh, she targeted female. And she added pop culture or comedy in there. Really interesting. So this one has completely outperformed this top one. That's doing very, very well as well. So really some interesting information here. She's had 62 page likes from this ad alone. Okay, six page post likes. So from that, she's had six people like a post, two page photo views, and two other actions. So that could be, I don't, I'm not sure what exactly that would be. The sum of all remaining actions. To see more details, click on the full actions report. Okay, so the takeaway there is that she's had 62 page likes from this specific ad. Amazing. I'm going to close this up. And we're going to take a look. I'm going to close this one up too. I'm going to take a look here and take a look at her social reach. Take a look at her actions, her clicks. So close, right? So basically anyone who's taken any action on the ad has liked the page. Interesting. That means she's really targeting the people that, that are going to like her page. It's phenomenal. Um, again, auto bid, she's paying a little bit more. So she's paying $1.30 for Im um, an impression. Um, typically, what Facebook does, it's based on competition. So the keywords that you use in your ad here will dictate how much that price is. And then the people that you target will dictate it as well. So say you're paying you know, $1.30 and, and what I would do now, my recommendation for Kaylin would be to create an ad very similar, use the same specifications and maybe play around with these words. Um, uh, Aboriginal jewelry and art, surprisingly, it has a really high, it's very highly competitive and very expensive ad space for some reason. So maybe we, we reword the, or we use different words that isn't gonna quite tip off Facebook that that's, you know, what we're going for. So you kind of play around with it. Though for, you know, $1.30, that is a bit much, but it's a highly converting ad. She's got 62 likes out of it in a very short period of time. Then hey, you know, two bucks a day seems pretty manageable. Sponsored story has been created from this one as well, from this ad. And uh, let's take a look here at the clicks. I mean, it hasn't been doing, it's really not as effective as the ad itself. She's paying $1.25 per impression. Why not? You might as well keep that running as well. Um, let's see here. Yeah, so those are two, two really successful ads. Um, let's take a look here at this one. 
So this, this ad is not doing well. And it's interesting because really the only difference is that she's not targeting females, she's not targeting the US, and um, she seems to have pets or photo uploading. <laughs> so somehow that's not translating to her audience. Now she knows. Okay, so it's kind of, it is really interesting. Take a look, have fun with it. Um, I always recommend having a really strict naming convention so you know exactly when you look at an ad what it is about, right? So you can see immediately Kona Bunny, highly converting. Um, this one, she doesn't have that information. You can click on it and get the preview. I'd recommend saying calling all artists dream catcher image. Okay, so just being kind of disciplined with that. And uh, at any time, you can change your budget. So if you're like, yeah, let's bump it up. Let's do $10 a day. I'm running a campaign. I really want to get, you know, 5,000 likes by the end of January. Then go ahead and change your budget. That's really easy to do. And at any time, you can pause it if things are getting a bit heated or, you know, you, you're not wanting to spend as much as you're spending. You can always pause the, the campaign or pause the, spe the specific ad as well. Okay? So I really hope that clarifies things. Um, there's a lot of information, you know, to be, to go over and to look at, but just dig around and I really recommend Googling stuff too, like, and Facebook has a really in-depth glossary about what every, like, what all the terms are. And so what I always do is I'm really specific. I'll be like, what is the difference between a click and an action on Facebook ads? And you'll find all kinds of information there as well. So have fun with it. Educate yourself on, on the Facebook ads. But at a minimum, just start creating them and seeing what's working and seeing what isn't. And um, have fun. Good luck.